Welcome to Christmas Future! 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 Who knows what the future holds? Nobody knows. Remember that. Every day is a chance. You have 365 chances a year to change your life. Who knows what will happen in the future? I don't think we're gonna have flying cars. We can barely control the cars on the road. But we're gonna have some fun thinking about possibilities for future food. PFF. <laughs> What's gonna happen is the meat industry is gonna collapse as eventually because there's too much meat being eaten. Uh, it doesn't mean you shouldn't eat meat, but there's too much meat being eaten and it's taking up too many resources. So what are people gonna eat? Insects, not gonna fly in the West. Seaweed, <sighs> possibly everything will be like genetically modified, like huge rice grains as big as a baby and things like that that you can chew on for a week. Um, <laughs> then there'll be a backlash and people will get back into like fermentation and, you know, things that work. So one of the things we're going to do today is PFF, but also things that will stand the test of time. We're going to try some molecular gastronomy. We're going to do some thinly sliced tuna with Tabasco spin. We're going to have carrot foam with ginger air. Maybe in the future we just eat spheres and foams. <laughs> then we are going to make some tried and trues because they'll always exist. People always want to be warm, happy, cozy, taken care of. We're going to make a beautiful turkey. CYL, change your life turkey. Take all the mystery out of every turkey for the rest of your life. Life changing, change your life. We're going to make some candy which is a little scary, but we're gonna make some toffee brittle and we're going to make sugar plums. So we have a beautiful appetizer, some fun stuff, a beautiful mane, and a couple of lovely candy desserts. And that is what we mean. Bye. Christmas future! Change Your Life Chicken, which we did without the assistance of Hightow, Adam, or Nicholas, with just Regina and Lynn. Uh, we thought it was appropriate to show you this system again because it will literally change your life. So we call it sill chicken or sill turkey in this case. This will remove any concern you ever had in the history of your life about making the turkey. 10 years ago, I came across, I think in gourmet, oh, oh, um, something called the high heat method. There's no putting the turkey in the nine o'clock in the morning. You don't do that. You gotta have a thermopro. Reason number one, you can leave it in and the monitor is, the digital monitor is outside the oven. If you don't want to buy a Thermopro, you have to buy one that stays in the meat because every time you open it and stick the thing in, you're messing up, okay? So if you don't want to buy a Thermopro, at least buy one of the ones that can stay in your, in your cut because otherwise you're going to have a, a problem. So the first thing we're going to do is remove this disgusting thing, okay? There's just something disgusting about this to me. There's something anti-cook about it. I, don't, I, I, I know people need it because they don't have a thermometer. Plus, it leaves a hole. Help me. So what we're gonna do is spatchock this. Now look, it's big. It's a big bird. I am gonna try and do it with a knife. <gasps> I know this is a little intense, all right? There's the backbone, I can see it. So I'm gonna cut down like this through the ribs. I should really have poultry shears, but I don't. 
The first cut is the deepest. So keep, keep feeling. We went in a little bit. We have the blade bone there. It's a mistake. It doesn't matter. This is what they mean when they say he's a tough old bird. Here's the rest of the backbone. It's an animal, okay? You have to deal with that fact. I'm taking the backbone out, but it's giving me a hard time. <laughs> Backbone. Uh, you can use this uh, for your sauce if you'd like. I'm gonna flip it like this. Oh, you have to break the breastbone. Okay, I'm drying it. Now, the most important thing about, cha about change your life is it has to be done in advance, meaning it has to stay in the refrigerator covered in salt overnight. So we are now going to cover this thing in salt. I'm also using a little dried fruit and bay leaves and gumminess, our old friend Togarishi. So I'm just gonna flip this real quick again. Now it's gonna make a big mess. It's gonna release a ton of liquid, which is gonna give you a very juicy turkey with crispy skin, which is what you want. And then before we cook it, we're gonna tie the legs together and put some oranges and lemons inside. Now, this should be really coated. This is just plain salt now. So why do you spatchock it? Well, guess what the hardest part about cooking a turkey is? Cooking it evenly. This exposes all of your turkey at the same time to the same heat. You don't have to deal with this again. The only thing you have to do is change the tin foil and then it goes in the oven. So you'll see, if you leave it long enough, the skin will turn almost purple. It gets a strange color. You're curing it and the skin will get very tight. And uh, that's what you want. Now the truth is you can leave it for two days if you want. One day is great. Now this goes in the refrigerator to rest and become change your life. The other great thing about change your life, which we'll get to when we cook it, is it takes about two hours, about an hour and a half, because we're gonna cook it very hot. We're gonna pour vermouth in the bottom if it smokes, and it's gonna look lacquered. I also lacquer it with a little bit of um, soy. So I'm gonna put this in the fridge. Open, do not cover it. So he's going for his final sleep. It's nice to offer candy at the end of a, a meal. This is Jody's recipe, just frankly, right out of the Bouvette book, which is a beautiful gift, as well as a beautiful present to give yourself. And try to do one thing for yourself every day because it makes you better at doing things for other people. So here we go. Half a sheet of pen. <laughs> I'm generously buttering this because we're gonna pour the hot caramel here and we don't want it to stick. All right, what do we wanna put in our brittle? It's essentially brittle. I like nuts. I sort of crushed the remaining pecans I had because I ate most of them. And I'm gonna use some slivered almonds. And I love cherries. So I'm gonna put some dried cherries, whole cherries. Beautiful. I'm adding our yummy ingredients. Almonds. You want it to be mostly stuff, right? Some, some toffee, but mostly stuff. A cup of sugar. Okay. It's okay to stir it because it has butter in it. Uh, you really shouldn't stir normal caramel because it'll, it'll, as you've seen on Great British Baking Show. Okay, so this is a candy thermometer. You don't need this, but we may as well use it seeing as we have it. Oh, I want to put some salt in here. Don't be afraid. High heat. Stirring occasionally. Oh, it's going up, it's going up, it's going up, it's going up. Up. Oh, it went up to 200 very quickly. 300 is called hard crack. We're almost at 220, which is soft ball. Starting to look like we might be making candy. Who can make the sun? Na, 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 na. Who can make a little? Uh, how does that go? The candy man can. This is an example of something people are going to be making in 3021. You know, people are gonna stop eating candy? I don't think so.
There's also, there's an English um, kind of thing, and it doesn't exist in America. It's called honeycomb. And it's essentially caramel with baking soda. It's really good on ice cream, crumbled up on ice cream. If you're scared to make caramel, that's probably the one for you. Okay, we're approaching 300. Okay, we are at 300. This is nuclear. I'm not gonna put the chocolate in, it's still boiling. This is now untouchable. That's how hot the caramel is. I'm gonna put chocolate in half of it. Sprinkle some almonds on the top after you've melted your chocolate chips in there. This is dangerous in terms of little kids. I always recommend cook with kids, said the childless lady, but I, I wouldn't do this with kids because a splash is a burn. So you're gonna let this cool, to spare not. The worst thing that'll happen is it'll be bendy. And then you just cut it into small pieces. The best thing is to shatter it and just put it on a plate, willy nilly. And you can put anything you want in here. Raisins, hazelnuts, orange peel, ginger. I wouldn't put chocolate in it in, in the pan. Don't do that. Let me tell you something. If you order in Chinese food for your holiday dinner and you bring out some cracked up Brittle that you made with its fancy fruits in it and stuff. Your friends will never forget it. Let's talk about sugar plums. When my friend's kids hit nine or eight, I realized that I would never have to sit through the nutcracker again. I don't care about the dress. I don't, I don't, I don't get, here, here's my, here's my thoughts on ballet. What part of the story is this? You're calling it the Nutcracker, or let's call it Sleeping Beauty. Okay, what's this 10 minute part? What, what part of the story is this? It's endless. I can't stand it. I'll never have to sit through it again. When you were a kid and you read in the night before Christmas that vis visions of sugar plums danced in their heads, what did you imagine? Nobody really knows. Um, they're probably based on an, very luxurious, expensive treat around the holidays, probably more similar to something called a comfit. They used to sort of coat them in sugar. They were many things, seeds, nuts, little pieces of dried fruit, and it was expensive. It took a long time to cover them. It's called panning, and it took a long time to cover them in the sugar, and it was an expensive thing that only rich people had. So a sugar plum is probably vaguely related to a comfit of some kind, and it was probably closer to a Jordan almond or a drage. It's probably closer to that. I don't wanna make that. We're gonna make some random recipe that's more modern, more futuristic. It's just like a delicious bite, like a fruit bite. And all we're gonna do is process some beautiful fruits with a little bit of cherry jam, make it into balls, roll it in sugar, and place it on a cute plate. Here we go. Cherries. We don't wanna make a paste. We wanna make a chop, because we don't want a paste you, couldn't, you can't roll, so we have to keep that in mind. I like a prune. Do you like prunes? I do. Oh, these are dates. Dates are full of sugar, and they're delicious. They look like cucarachas. They're very, very good. Uh, some almonds. I'm gonna put in around the same amount of almonds. Let's just finish that. And I'm gonna pull set. Do you know in England, they, they, this is a word you really don't have here. A pulse. Do you know what that is in England? You'll never, ever believe it. It's a legume, like lentils, dried peas, things like that. So when they say, I grabbed a pulse, and you're like, what the hell is he talking about? He means he grabbed some lentils. Anyways, here we go. I'm pulsing it. It needs more than pulse. <laughs> Need a little more fruit. See that? So it's almost capable. Well, we need a few more, I think, prunes. Just a few more. I'm gonna put a little bit of this very delicious Dalmatia cherry preserves that we use in our cheese plate episode. Who ate a lot of cheese that day? I did. I'm gonna put two dollops of this in, and then I think we're gonna be able to roll it. So uh, because it's a Christmassy treat, let's put a little bit of the 
hatefully named pumpkin spice. That's plenty. I'm gonna put a tiny bit of salt. Okay, that is just one step away from a paste. Oh, it's delicious. I have here some caster sugar. Okay, I'm gonna try to roll one. Rolled up pretty good. Now I'm gonna try this. Oh my goodness, how pretty is that? Oh, it's delightfully gorgeous. Ah, let's make another. Something really cute that you could do with these is put a spoonful of brandy or rum in there, just when you're pulsing it. And uh, you know, you can make a more adult version. It'll have a, the aroma of rum. Don't pour rum in here. You still have to roll it in a bowl, but that's a way of sort of making it even more grown up. Now, when you store these in the fridge, you can put them in a little Tupperware, but if you do layers, put wax paper or parchment in between the layers. I would store them in the refrigerator because it is essentially jam. Why don't you try to make it? Sugar plums. Forget about the nutcracker. Just do your own thing. Okay. This has been drying in the refrigerator. What I'm gonna do now is lift this up. I'm gonna take away this, which is soaked. Tip out the excess salt and set it back down. The reason we do that is because if there's too much liquid in the bottom, uh, it will burn. So because I massacred this when I, um, quote, butch butchered it, <laughs> um, I'm gonna prop it up. This still needs to go up a bit. Chuck in a lemon, and I'm kind of stuffing it to make it even. Okay, now I'm gonna tie the legs together. Uh, just get some twine, pick them up, cross their legs, and tie it. Uh, this is gonna go into a hot oven. I'm using convection, you don't need to. Don't be afraid to start it at full whack, 480 and then lower it to around 400. Keep an eye on it. Have a little liquid, whether it be vermouth, stock, in case you need to cool the bottom of the pan off a little bit. Here we go, into the oven. This is a nice preheated oven. Mine's at 480 convection. I'm gonna watch this and I'm gonna turn it down. Actually, right now, I'm gonna turn it down to 450 convection and I uh, have my stock or my vermouth there to throw in the bottom of the pan if I get smoking. I'm gonna tell you right now, I forgot to put the thermometer in. Okay. C-Y-L. So let's make Butternut squash puree. Uh, this was just salt, pepper, a little bit of maple syrup, and some of it got eaten during shooting today, so there's very, very little left, but it's incredibly easy. I'm just gonna show you. Just put it in a blender. Now, unlike potatoes, you can make this puree in the blender because it doesn't have the same starch level as um, potatoes. It doesn't turn into glue. I have a little bit of melted butter here for processing. This is just a lovely side with your turkey, and you can make Finzi Contini from way back in the day of Dinner Party Tonight. You can make grilled baby gem as your, you know, as your greens. You can do broccoli rabe, all these delicious things for your greens. But this is a nice, colorful, you know, Christmassy yumminess. So I'm just gonna try to process this without butter, first of all. No oh, dice. Word to the wise, do not use your wooden spoon. Okay, this is designed not to hit the bottom. If you've ever done it with a wooden spoon and have shards of wood in your food, you'll know what I'm talking about. It's a lot thicker than I thought. Just putting a little bit of salt. I'm gonna use a little stock to loosen it up. Good color. I switched to the bigger machine. I'm thinking maybe there's something wrong with the bottom of that. 
Now it's moving on top. Uh, you could thin it out even more if you wanted. It's quite thick. It's absolutely stunning. You're going to put this into a little pot. Just keep it warm. You can thin it with stock if you need to and serve it with your, your dinner. Squash puree. Made a little bit of a mess, but hey. Yeah. We're going to try an MRE. Do you know what an MRE is? It's, it's a meal ready to eat. A lot of doomsday preppers, just don't forget ever, there's doomsday preppers throughout history. Every generation thinks they're the last generation. There's doomsday people now. There were doomsday people in 1130. There were doomsday people in Egypt, okay? It's a common human thread. However, these doomsday people, they hoard emergency rations, another word for MRE. I'm gonna try one. What's it gonna be like? Let's eat an emergency ration, an MRE, a meal ready to eat. I have never eaten one before. There is a guy on YouTube who locates, through eBay, I guess, ancient MREs, pre-Vietnam, and he eats them on camera. It's fabulous. It's so funny. I have no idea what's in here. Lynn was trying to explain something to me, and I said, no, let's just open this up and eat it on camera. I'm not gonna take anything from my kitchen. I'm presuming they have a knife or scissors, right? Peelable seal. Come on, soldier! God, it's like Dwayne Johnson or something. How do you get in here? Okay, I'm gonna cut it. Do you get a present? I think there's a prize. Now let's see what we have here. This, this is the prize, I think. Oh, this is the tortellini. This isn't enough for a grown man. Here are the instructions. Oh. Oh my God, look at the list of ingredients. What's this? It's like an armband. We got trail mix recovery made in Piscataway, New Jersey. This is a uh, trail mix. Carbohydrate electric beverage powder. <laughs> This is, I'm presuming, Gatorade. Directions for use. Allow water just chemically purified. Interesting English. That's interesting English. To stand 30 minutes. Allow water just chemically purified to stand 30 minutes before adding to beverage powder. Oh, you pour it in the pouch. Oh, fold over top of pouch. Shake 30 seconds. This is presuming they don't have a cup. I'm telling you, you'd lose a lot of weight in the army, apparently. Chocolate peanut spread. That's good for kids. I mean, that's good for their young. Ah, hot sauce. Cayenne, red peppers, distilled vinegar, salt, and garlic. That's hot sauce. My spoon. Oh, this is the thing that Lynn was talking about. Here's the prize. Gum! This is so you don't have bad breath when you go out afterwards. This is freeze-dried coffee. I bet you it's not that bad. A huge packet of salt. That is at least a gram and a half of salt. Four grams. A moist towelette. Service men and women watching me do this, I'm not making fun of it. I'm, I'm fascinated that you have to eat this. And I'm, I wanna see if it's edible. And if it's not, I'm gonna write somebody about it. Oh, here's my napkin. Oh, it's a strange napkin. What is that? Oh, we got something else. Oh, hot beverage bag. Wait, I bet you you're right. I bet you this is, that's, look, look. This is more food. <gasps> Chocolate pudding dessert powder. We're gonna eat this. Look at the ingredients. <laughs> Directions for use, allow water just chemically purified to stand 30 minutes before adding to dessert powder, tear a pouch at notch, add four ounces of water. Okay, good. All right, let's eat. Crackers, look at this. It's not a bad cracker. Imagine trying to choke this down if you were scared. Remove MRE pouch and paperboard sleeve. It's not an armband. This is what it's for. Tear off top of bag. Do they mean this bag? 
<gasps> While holding MRE pouch and heater above lines on bag, pour water into the bag until it reaches a level between the lines. Slide heater to the bottom. Got it. Okay. I overfilled. Slide heater into the bottom and fold top of bag to side opposite of heater. So this side. Okay, now push it down. Push this down into the water, right? Okay, now fold bag away from heater. Stuff assembly into sleeve. They actually use the word stuff. We gotta send these guys food, man. This is horrendous. With heater underneath MRE, hold sleeve until heater feels warm. It doesn't feel warm at all. Oh, here we go. It's getting warm now. It's boiling. It's boiling hot. Holy sh Look! It boiled! That's creepy! Now what do you do? After 10 or 15 minutes, I'm not waiting 15 minutes. Are we ready? <laughs> Are you supposed to eat it out of here? Yes, right? Is it gonna explode? Oh man, that's nasty. I would cry. I think I would cry. All right, here we go. Stone cold. Send them a care package. There's hundreds of charities that do that. It's 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 bitter. Not an inter not a common flavor for tortellini. <laughs> Let's try the hot sauce. I mean, that's sad. That's a sad thing to give to a grown man. And then why do they give them four grams of salt? That's way too much salt. I just ate a few of those tortellini. They were not unsalted. Where are you supposed to put this? That's a lot of salt. Okay, let's make some chocolate pudding. I think it should be allow water, comma, just chemically purified, comma, to stand 30 minutes before adding it. Tear a pouch at notch, add four ounces of water, about a sixth of a canteen cup. Fold over top of pouch, firmly hold top of pouch. You could just say, and firmly hold it. Shake for 60 seconds, finish stirring with spoon. Oh, I drew my spoon out. You're supposed to use the same spoon? Oh, that wasn't it. <laughs> mm, chemically. This is approximately four ounces. Shouldn't it be like super beautiful, high calorie, nutritious, delicious food? This is high calorie. Chocolate spread, chocolate peanut spread, that's good. Mmm, <laughs> puddingy. It's really disgusting. God, why would you do this to those women and men? It should be like black beans and rice and pie and cakes. It's also bitter, which is an unusual flavor in a pudding. We want to thank you guys for your service. And now, because I'm going into town, uh, I'm going to have my gum. I'm gonna start sending care packages. Okay, uh, we're at 170, which is completely safe and delicious. 168's probably doable. 
Oh boy. So this needs to rest for at least 40 minutes. It's piping hot. The juice is all screwed up in itself and it needs to calm down and relax and we need to put it on its presentation and make it beautiful. Don't forget about your puree. You have about 40 minutes before service. This is me paying attention to the puree. It's basically superb. Change your life. We're going to make some foam stairs and spheres. But first of all, we're going to make a foam, an espuma. Fran Adria, who was the president of um, Il Bui, which is now closed, kind of made foams super famous. However, you might know a foam as what's on top of your cappuccino. It's not a new idea. Air is just a less dense foam. Flavored foams and airs can be extremely fussy and silly. And we're gonna have some fun. Now, using a little foam as a decoration with a, on a plate is lovely. You know, you can make beautiful stuff look more beautiful, possibly, or you can not do this. It's just for fun. So we're gonna make a carrot espuma with ginger air. First of all, we're going to make carrot juice, which you can buy, just buy it. You don't have to make it. Oh no, oh no, oh no, 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 no. Okay, I'm gonna put some water in here. I'm just uh, pureeing some carrots in water to make carrot juice, essentially. Uh, it doesn't have to be the world's most amazing puree because we're going to squeeze it in some cheesecloth, if you care. This is nice cheesecloth. My question is, why can't Bounty, right, the best paper towels, obviously, make a Bounty that's not bleached? Who cares if it's this color? I don't care. And it would save a lot of waste in their factory and stuff. You know what I mean? Why don't they do that? Reggie, hold the other side of this. Okay. Double this. La la la. Squeeze this. Get as much of the juice out as you can. What makes a foam stay in a foam? A stabilizer. Did you ever have a drink at a bar that had a foam on it? That foam is made using a flavoring and egg whites. What we're going to do is use an egg white substitute called lecithin. It's really just like egg whites. This is so that when I make it, it stays in the, the state that we want. So you've made your juice, you've kind of chilled it a little bit. You're gonna mix in, we're gonna do a sort of a combo foam with a little cream element and a little stabilization. This is approximately a cup, and I believe it's half a teaspoon to a cup, okay? This is my Breville Immersion Blender. It has speeds. I'm just mixing the carrot juice with the lecithin, which is essentially powdered egg whites, but it's not. And I'm gonna put a little bit of very cold cream in here. All right, I'm gonna put this in the fridge while we make some ginger foam. I'm just chilling this in the gun. This is ginger, which I literally made exactly the same way. I chopped up, I peeled and chopped some ginger and blended it with cold water. And then it made this, which is kind of like, there's pieces of ginger in the bottom and I'm gonna strain it. Ooh, I mean, it's literally water and ginger. Cute. A little bit of this. Here we go. It's making the foam. See the foam? This is something you'll never do, but it's fun. So I'm tilting it so that I'm not pulverizing the air, the ginger air. Basically, you can make foam without any lecithin or anything. It's just the top part of froth. Very gingery. Putting this in the fridge. Now, here's our big experiment. <laughs> this is a, a whipped cream gun. It takes this cartridge, it's nitrous oxide, which is laughing gas. You ever go to the dentist 
ask for gas, okay? Because it'll change your whole dental experience. But this is nitrous. Now, one time I was whipping cream for Paul for dessert and it was fizzy. The whipped cream was fizzy. Very strange, right? And it's because I used a soda stream cartridge, which is CO2. So you need nitrous. I'm gonna do a second cartridge. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Carrot foam with ginger air. Hilarious. <laughs> you could cut some chives on here. I would serve this basically as a joke, but I would serve it as an amuse. This can be beets. I'm just gonna try this. <laughs> it tastes like carrots. <laughs> okay, that's great. The music of the spheres. Let's make spheres. Spheres are not really a cooking thing. It's literally a chemical thing. What you're doing is taking a liquid and dropping it into another liquid that forms a skin, a tasteless, super thin skin. You need sodium alginate, sodium citrate if your liquid is acidic, and calcium chloride to form the sphere. I'm gonna follow this to the T. And we're gonna make Tabasco spheres to go with our tuna carpaccio. This is three quarters of a cup of water. All right, I'm gonna put half a teaspoon in this water. Half a teaspoon. Just gonna basically mix this. Okay, now I'm gonna mix the sodium alginate. <laughs> Isn't this hilarious? Half a teaspoon of sodium alginate. I'm gonna put that and I'm gonna mix it with the same amount of sugar. Half a teaspoon. Mixing it together. Live together in perfect harmony. Sodium algae and sugar. Why don't we make a sphere? And we're slowly going to sprinkle this in and keep blending. It's called reverse spherification, which I don't understand. Why is it reverse spherification? See, it's getting a little glutinous. It's getting glutinous. Now they want you to wait after you do this. You're supposed to wait 40 minutes for all the bubbles to go away. We're not gonna do that. Here is a quarter cup of Tabasco sauce. That's a lot of Tabasco. <laughs> this is absurd. Now it has some bubbles. We're gonna pour it through a sieve and kind of scoop off the bubbles. All it does is make bubbles in your spheres, which is like, I'm not Thomas Keller, you know. Did I ever tell you guys about when my friend that I worked with, we were both single and she got a date with one of the McElhaney kids and I'm like, she doesn't even eat hot sauce. And I'm like, you get to go on a date with one of the McElhaney's from Tabasco. They make Tabasco sauce. What we're gonna do is create two baths. One of them is straight water where we're gonna put the finished pearls, okay? And one is calcium chloride. One cup. This is the last like serious thing, measuring wise, I mean, because it's the solution of um, sodium chloride. All right, is how much? One teaspoon, oh my goodness. You mix it with a spoon. Listen, are you really gonna go buy all this stuff? Please, okay? But it is hilarious. And I was thinking after I started playing with it, it's actually not that crazy with like oysters, lemon pearls, Tabasco pearls, mignonette pearls. Not so crazy. Oh, it's dissolving. It's finally dissolving. 
I'm gonna be honest with you. I bought something called a Sparificator. 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 Unnecessary thing. I got excited and I bought it. Uh, you don't need to buy a spherificator. You need an eyedropper, that's all. Now I will note, this did seem jammed. I love when I put it away last time, so I guess we'll see. Now look, does it still have bubbles? Do we really care? No, looks like hot sauce to me. I don't think we need to strain this, so I'm not gonna strain it. Here's my spherificator. I'm going to pour the liquid into the spherificator. They want you to leave it in the bath for around a minute, and then you collect the pearls, rinse them, and, and uh, serve. Are we ready? Oops. Hmm, okay. This particular mixture is acting up a little bit, so I'm just doing it like this instead of using the multiples. The reason I bought it, which is to make multiple spheres at once. I'm just dropping a single sphere. And as it hits the water, it immediately makes this, the sphere, which is kind of amazing. See that? Isn't that cool? It said if, um, if your mixture is too thick, and also if your mixture is too acidic, and this is too acidic, I think. I think it needed more citrate. But it's my second time making spheres. Crucify me. So I'm gonna let it sit for around a minute. It's been a minute already. You don't wanna let it sit in here too long and you don't wanna store it in here because it will continue to make the skin and you'll end up with a, a jelly ball. Ah, look at this, so cute. So cute, oh my God. I'm gonna strain out our pearls. They're quite robust. I'm just gonna rinse them under water to get rid of the calcium chloride. And then I'm gonna store them in a little bit of water just while we're making our meal. See that? Now, if I was gonna store that longer than simply prepping my meal, I would store it in Tabasco flavored water. Now, I will say the first time I used it with the lemon, they were identical and you could hold the button down and it just dropped pearls in the water. I don't know what happened, but anyways, it worked, so we don't care. Moving on, we're just gonna cut some tuna very thin we're gonna cut some a radish over it. We're gonna put a little togarishi, little cilantro, a little pepper, a little bit of rice vinegar, tiny bit of olive oil, and our Tabasco spheres. What an elegant appetizer. The first order of business is cutting the tuna. This is a very nice piece of tuna. It's a little bit thin to have leeway with, but we're gonna try our best. I'm just gonna cut a few pieces. I'm not a uh, sushi person, as you can immediately tell. I'm trying to see the knife all the way through my cut. I think one more piece and we're done, right? All right. It's not the most, you know, sushi level stuff you ever saw in your life, right? <laughs> but it's carpaccio. I have some beautiful pieces of cilantro that I'm putting like this. Here is some organic rice vinegar. Okay, a little bit of vinegar. Some dots of olive oil. Bloop, bloop, bloop. Togarishi, here we go. A little togarishi, make it extra beautiful, right? Look at that. Tiny, tiny squeeze of lemon, like this. Ooh. Then we're just gonna slice a beautiful radish, which I've washed. This is a, an appetizer fit for a holiday, that's for sure. Studied randomness, don't forget that. A little bit of pepper. Are you ready for this? A piece of masterful nonsense and our Tabasco balls. Tabasco spheres, Tabasco spheres, Tabasco spheres are here. And put a cell. Oh, come on. Who would say no to tuna carpaccio with Tabasco spheres, togarishi, cilantro, lemon juice, and vinegar? Nobody I know. It's future food time. 
Maybe you're gonna serve your turkey in outer space. Maybe the decorations on the plate are gold. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe there's gold food then. Personally, I'm very anti-gold food. Gold leaf that, I, I don't understand it. But we happen to have some gold edible spray paint that reeks of false vanilla. And we're going to spray these grapes with it. It's grapes in outer space. Mmm! <laughs> Ta-da! <laughs> Let's try silver. Everybody loves to spray paint their food. It seems super appetizing. <laughs> oh! Mmm! Mmm! The smell is indescribable. For a cake, like a spray paint, you could do something actually kind of beautiful. But this is hilarious. Silver and gold, silver and gold. I mean, are the people gonna be painting their food? Ta-da! <laughs> Your turkey has rested. Now, it has a little bit of a salt crust. That's good, it flavors the meat. But you go ahead, you can brush some of it off, okay? Just give it a light sort of brush off. I'm now going to hopefully pick this up and set it on the serving tray. Oh, yes. I'm gonna literally decorate this with some fruit just to make it look nice, you know, for when they come to the table and they see it's very festive and everything. These are beautiful oranges, which I'm just gonna cut and place like this. A lemon, perhaps, comme ça. Usually the rule is no inedible garnish. Well, essentially this is not inedible. It's an herb, right? It's not inedible. It's nice herbs, beautiful. So you don't want to bring it just like sitting alone on its thing, you know what I mean? I mean, it deserves a little respect, don't you think? Turkey, change your life. You'll never make turkey in the old way again. This took under two hours, just saying. Christmas forever. Not Christmas past, present, or future. Even if they don't eat it, it doesn't matter. You're together. They're here. Your friends are here. Chinese food. Whatever you want. It don't matter as long as you're together. Here's our puree. And I'm just going to put the puree. It's, it's warmed. I've warmed it nicely. I've warmed it nicely. So here's our beautiful tray. This was a present from Nicolas, my friend Nicolas. And we're just going to crack this beautiful toffee and arrange it on the bottom there. So I'm just going to kind of break this in irregular pieces. And I'm just putting it on this bounty towel because there's a little butter in the bottom. Remember when we greased the pan? So it's a tiny bit buttery in the bottom there. I'm just going to put shards of toffee here. And our sugar plums, so delightful. And you just come sashaying into the dining room with your homemade candy tray. I mean, come on. This kind of thing will never go out of fashion. That you made something beautiful for your friends to enjoy after dinner. This never, ever goes out of fashion. Past, present, and future. Give to your friends. Possible future food. We tried an absolutely disgusting MRE. Man, that was bad. We made tuna carpaccio with Tabasco spheres, very fancy. We made carrot foam or espuma with ginger air, a delightful sort of amuse. Then we had change your life turkey. We tried to spray some grapes, but it didn't work out so great. We made squash puree, made a little bit of a mess, but hey, we made some lovely almond toffee, and we even made sugar plum candies. What a holiday dinner. Listen, at dinner party tonight, all of us, we don't know how to thank you guys. You don't know what your letters and comments mean. We try to answer them all, 
but I cannot express to you what it feels like to have such an extended family across numerous countries watching our show. Dinner party tonight. Think about the title. Why don't you have a dinner party tonight? Just for some, some jerk, some person you work with. If the show does anything for you, it's have your friends over. And don't be afraid to have your friends over because life is short and you gotta live. Otherwise you got nothing to talk about in the locker room, <laughs> like we always say. Do something nice for yourself today after you watch me say this, go and do something nice for yourself because the big secret is it makes you better at doing nice things for other people. Believe it, it's true. So another year is gone and we move forward into 22 out of the blackjack year. And we wish you the greatest holiday season. And thank you again from the bottom of our hearts for watching these three episodes and any episode you've ever watched. Thank you from Dinner Party Tonight to everybody watching. Happy holidays. You have 365 chances a year to change your life.